everybody this is mr hardcore mode where nothing's easy here to bring you a, another dragon age video on their skill progression system see how that works um see what they got in store for us we know that the game they literally just changed everything to mass effect let's not kid ourselves it's literally mass effect but with swords so let's see what dragon age the 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 mass effect is doing uh for our progression system and see what we got in store for yeah for for everybody that's going to play let's uh go ahead and dive right in i will maximize this screen because this is probably not big enough sorry if i'm yawning i haven't had a good night's rest until last night good lord that felt good okay The following video shows moments from within the game. I'm Hillary Heidi, a producer at Bioware. Let's take a look at game progression in Dragon Age the video. Is there something wrong with my with my um with my coloring? Because apparently I don't know what's making my whole thing bleed with color, but this whole Dragon Age the Veil Guard part right here, I think that's bleeding colors. If there's any way for me to fix that, let me know. Um, just wanted to say that. I, I, I always wanted to what about that. Veil Guard. In this video, we'll cover skill progression, item progression, and companion progression. My goal is to build a rogue assassin who darts around my enemies and strikes them down with poison blades. In order to craft this build, I'll need to invest in the right skills, find and upgrade gear, and ensure... Sorry, I'm looking at everything that's going to be in this whole thing. Um, I'm not too much of a fan of the purple, but purple is what we got. I kind of miss the old days when everything felt like an old book, like the HUD and the UI and everything. And when you open your journal, it looked like an old, like, like a uh, medieval like journal and it has blood markings and stuff on it. And it looked like you actually wrote on it. Now we got, um, over Veil Guard or Veil Guard the Overwatch or or Destiny, uh, Destiny Three, but we went back in time. Ensure my companions complement my strategy. Let's start by honest, looking at skill progression. Though. As you complete missions, find codex entries, explore the world, and kill enemies. Skill level of your class. Each new level grants more health and unlocks skill points. The constellation skill tree is where you spend points to unlock new skills. Each class has a unique skill tree and can specialize in a specific form of combat. So it looks like you got um for rogue, you got the duelist, you got the veil ranger. And you got the saboteur. And now, like I said before, I really think that that the rogue can be changed in a way to where it just focuses on two blades and have the ranger have its own own thing. So the ranger would focus primarily only on ranged combat. And of course, when it comes to enemies getting closer to you, you'll have certain abilities that are available for you for when enemies get close be it movement speed, be it uh, preventing them from like attacking you, like a smoke screen or something like that. Those sort of things would only focus on um, given that sort of archer, ranger, or what have you to give, it, give yourself some distance from the enemy. Because this game, you, your character is, you, you're the main character you're doing the biggest damage you're you're doing the biggest damage not your allies your allies are barely even there um but when it comes to being a mage or anybody that's doing ranged combat there's got to be some sort of level of i want to distance myself from the enemy and then shoot them from afar because if you're you're a lover of ranged combat you want that you want that sort of feeling of like, I'm laying waste to this motherfucker that's like 30 feet away from me. You know, that sort of thing. 
and that that makes you feel good. You don't, you don't want to fight the whole damn time shooting arrows at an enemy that's like right up into your face giving you kisses. But uh, that would be cool if Ranger had its own set of rules, own set of of background, and like I'm just saying, like give Dragon Age new shit. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to the classes and the job class that you have i think i think dragon age deserves that and they have been getting that but have you noticed that in dragon age 2 and 3 when it comes to dragon age 2 in in inquisition you would see something like oh crap i've never seen this before and then you see the next game and they're just like we got rid of that shit and this is what you got now like a healer for example that, that that that's one that that's one that's i saw i saw neve heal and that's just not that's that's it i don't think you're going to become a healer somebody was saying that uh, down below in one of my comment section and i was like no nah, i don't think we're going to become a healer it sucks we like being a healer healing from a distance getting buffs and that sort of thing i miss that shit in dragon age origins but they they have no love for healers in in dragon age They're like nah nah fuck you guys because nah you, all you got is one neve heal maybe a revive out of fucking nowhere from an ally and and potions that is just called potion it's not cal- called health pol- uh, polstice or whatever there's nothing special about it it's just potion you hit a green pot and it's like guess what you got two potions and i'm just like oh that's that's kind of kind of boring i'm going off on a tangent and i i'm sorry Specializations unlock at level 20. Rogues can specialize as saboteurs, bell rangers, or duelists. I'm going to build toward the duelist specialization, right. which emphasizes agility and poisoning enemies with necrotic damage. Well, now that you're going with a duelist and you're going to prioritize like um, melee combat, well, now you got arrows. You know, now you got arrows. Like, you see what I'm saying? What if somebody just wants, like, I'm trying to give some agency to the player. Like, okay, so the ranger, um, because if they go come from the middle of the skill tree, they're gonna like run into skills that say increase your range, increase your your melee, and then you're gonna think to yourself, well, I just want to do melee. Why am I getting this point on Ranger when I just want Ranger? You see what I'm saying when it comes to like like giving the player enough room to be like, okay, I'll do both. Or okay, I'll just do Ranger. Or okay, I'll just do melee. You know, that sort of thing. And and I think I think that's kind of that this this is one thing that I think that Dragon Age uh should uh should uh take into account and just throw away with the whole idea with ranger like like if you're gonna have both two two types of weapons for 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 the rogue then give agency to the person that just wants to do range or person that just wants to do melee because more than likely you're gonna go through the beginning part of the level one or two like skill points and you're going to run into like the line and it's just like increase your range. And I'm like, I don't want to do range, bro. I don't want to do range. I want to get in there. But I'm just saying. There are four types. Uh, right there. Uh, well, uh, the middle one. See what I mean? Oh, uh, 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 well, okay. 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 Cool. 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 Here we go. It looks like the bottom one right here with the bow is focused on range oh okay okay hold up hold up was i talking all that shit for no reason well do they got it okay so we got lines going in every which direction so it looks like you got rain uh melee up top right up top the skill types and you got range at the bottom okay okay you also got this one of blade ability that will probably take up a slot if you're trying to do just range. So it's up to you whether or not you want to have that skill. I hope they don't just take your skill point and you have to have that melee 
like ability and you could just focus on just range that's what i mean when it comes to like if you're gonna do rogue could somebody just focus on just th just this or that is what i'm saying because i think rogue is the most like diverse out of all of the the classes but uh i still think ranger should have or archer or ranged dps should have their own section that's just me types of skills traits passives abilities and ultimates traits are activated by okay so repost okay so we're focusing on melee combos. the repost trait cool. launches a powerful cool. counterattack. this is this is not bad this is not bad the fact that they're they're giving you some room to do ranged and to do um to do melee that's good it gives people a sense of like oh i can do both or the other two after a successful parry or defend passives are skills that are always active the death's blessing passive gives you plus 10 percent necrotic damage i'll be honest though can we talk about necrotic damage for a bit do you think that you're going to be fighting ugly ass dark spawn that were drawn by a by a child d do, do you think that necrotic damage is really going to do anything what is that that's what i mean what is necrotic damage you know what i mean you're fighting off mostly dark spawn you're probably going to fight off humans bandits that sort of thing but you're primarily going to focus on either demons see this is why i'm kind of getting tired of veil guard cuz it's like you there's no sense of like i'm gonna be fighting some normal people all i see is you're gonna be fighting dark spawn maybe some blood mages but no i barely any bandits so necrotic damage on a dark spawn so i'm over here just like is that gonna do anything and I'm like, uh, okay, what is necrotic damage? What does it do? I think necrotic damage for against a um, a dark spawn should literally do. I wouldn't want to say no damage because that's brutal. I would say it ha they have to have a high resistance on necrotic damage. Because have you seen the dark spawn? I mean, come on. I, you're looking at it they drink necrotic damage for breakfast okay uh, we've uh, we've clarified that they don't like fire but necrotic damage you gotta come at me with that one come on now there's no radiant damage in this game um uh, but yeah abilities are actions you trigger during combat is it poison no it's not poison no it's not poison this game really does focus on pro, uh, procs and, and uh, what's it called? Um, combos a lot. With the toxic dash ability, much. you dash towards your target to land a deadly blow, dealing necrotic damage. This also applies the sundered status, but we'll talk more about statuses when we get to companions. And finally, ultimates are high impact, large attacks that take longer to charge up, but create devastating ultimates man ultimates i like ultimates but it's just like where did we go now now we're in ultimate territory now we what well, this is an mmo now and i'm just like this is what we got and fuck these ultimates man what what the fuck is this man we're over here talking about ultimates you know how big these ultimate little abilities are on your screen you got your three small ass abilities right in the middle and then guess what giant freaking diamond is glowing at the bottom of your screen just one big fucking diamond that's glowing right below your screen like i'm ready to unleash and you know you're gonna do your die 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 moment with reaper or something like that it's just so not dragon age but now it's dragon age is hopefully uh, uh, dude Question, do companions have ultimates? Stating amounts of damage. Within the duelist specialization, I have access to a unique ultimate ability called a murder of crows. I'll unlock this ability and then switch over to my character screen to equip my new ultimate.
I like see what I mean see how big this thing is well we'll we'll, we'll see it in the main screen by the way the murder of crows abilities I didn't see any fucking crows where are the crows at bro they're gonna put one audio and it's just gonna be like ah! it's gonna be the it's gonna be that guy that plays as the parrot from Aladdin ah! can I go home now <laughs> <laughs> you already paid me. <laughs> you can swap out your abilities and ultimates anytime you're not in combat. Anytime you're not in combat. So, yeah. So you're going to get more than three abilities. And what ultimate? That's going to suck because you're going to run into a moment where you're just... Uh, either, I think the abilities will probably be on the side of the skill tree. I think. Wait a minute, that's a good question. We need to go back. What if somebody doesn't want a certain certain ability, but it's right in the way? Okay, that that ability is right there. No, it's gonna be in the way, and you're gonna be like, yeah, it's yeah. There's gonna be moments where the ability is gonna get in your way, and you're like, I don't want this ability. I like this ability that I have, and you're gonna waste a skill point. Uh, where's a good example? Uh, passive 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 this is a, a, an ability right here see right here that's an ability right there and so i th i wondered to myself it's clear to me that we have less abilities we have already had this discussion we've already had this discussion so everybody's gonna have this ability right here everybody's gonna have the other ability over there there's not really going to be a difference between other characters everybody's going to have these same abilities because you're going to only have three abilities we've already had this discussion it's fucking stupid and i re i i respect their ability to make whatever the game they got but i think it's a stupid decision but you're going to end up with the same abilities as your friend who also is playing the game you have your YouTube vids. Thanks for speaking out against this abomination. Thanks, Val. I appreciate it. Yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, I, bro, I, I know how to count to 10. I'm looking at this. There's so much purple. So much purple. Tell, tell, tell me you like purple without telling me you like purple. You can swap out your abilities and ultimates anytime you're not in combat. You can also enhance your abilities with it. This dude looks awesome. I'm not going to lie. He looks kind of cool. He's got eyes all around his helmet. He kind of cool looking. But this game looks like it's fucking destiny with swords. You got, you always got that vendor that's just like standing there like, like he actually matters. And he's just like, and there's always that UI on the side of your screen. I'm sorry. It takes out the immersion, man. It takes out the immersion. I, I just I just feel like there's a different way at giving me a vendor nowadays where um have you ever what's that game that gives you that ability to have the vendor maybe be able to talk to you um and you're looking at the items and they're in the store. And all you have to do, ah, oh, it's Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2, you had the guy talking to you while he's like, check what you want. Get whatever you need. There was no, there's a catalog on his desk. And you can look at that catalog and purchase from there. But you can look around the store and look at the item and then physically grab the item. I think that's the highest level of, immer of immersion I've ever fucking seen. But every time when I see games like this, I, I guess Bioware has a low budget. I get it. I mean, or I, I get it. I understand it. But I'm just saying Red Dead Redemption 2, when it came to immersion with vendors, what? Mwah. Enchantments. But we'll get to that in part two. Ooh, sorry, that looked kind of cool. What a, what a... Answer your abilities with enchantments. But we'll get... Okay, so you're doing enchantments? No way. Is this the guy that's going to give you enchantments? Who the fuck is this? N See, he looks cool, but he's going to be the guy to give me enchantments? Just bring the... 
the one small short dwarf dude and make him rise from the grave with his stupid look on his face with his blonde hair and green eyes and let him be adorned by like jewelry and like all this like armor on him and he's going to be like enchantments and he's just going to follow you around and give you enchantments. And then you could ask him, how did you get that armor? What, how old are you? How did you live through all these years? And he's going to give you an answer. Enchantments. See that, that, that would have been fucking awesome. Who cares about this fucking like this ghosty looking spirit piece of shit. Bring him back enchantments. He looks great, bro. Bring him back, raise him from the dead, and he's got two elven bitches at on both his sides that are just rubbing his chest and shit. And he's just like, enchantment? He's like, so are these your girlfriends or something? And he's just like, enchantment. <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's like, nah, nah, son. Nah, I... <laughs> I got too much money for that shit. This man be rolling in dough with two elven bitch. It's never going to happen because I know Bioware Studios full of people that are just inclusive. But I'm just saying it would have been fun. It would have been fun. We'll get to that in part two. Yeah, the UI is kind of. By leveling up. I wouldn't say the UI is horrible. I'm just saying the UI is forgettable. Is that better? Is that better? I'm looking at the UI and I'm just like, huh, a UI. It, it's, you know what? That and you're kind of right. The UI screams, I'm in your fucking face. Do you see me? Do you see me on the UI? I am the UI. And I'm like, it's bright. It's big. It's purple. When the ability is ready, it just sparks up and it's just like, Whoa! And I'm like, good Lord, calm down. Cause right at the bottom right there, your, your ability to do an ultimate is not ready. But as soon as that, like all these glowy AP points over here, I'm just like, Oh God. Oh man. All right. It's shiny as fuck, but all right. At least for this, because they didn't bring out the wheel, they didn't bring out the wheel. So as long as they don't bring out the wheel, this area, this thing looks fine. Um, as long as it's, you know, minimalized and stuff like that. Um, the wheel is the most like insult to my eyes that I've ever seen, but this is doable right here. But as soon as that ultimate pops out, it's going to be huge. It's going to be a large ass glowy diamond. You'll see it. It's coming. Unlocking new skills and choosing a specialization. You can start. Okay, so you're fighting Kanari. Are these Kanari of the Kuhn? Wait a minute. Are these the Kanari? These are the Kanari. How come these Kanari look big with, with a fucking flaming musket? They got like some kick ass sort of helmet on they got their horns at, uh, being covered by some red tendrils these big bolstered up fucking like i hope you can look like that you know what i mean i hope your your canary can look like them because they look like i i'm sorry to say if harding got with a canary that looked like one of these canaries she she would definitely be a pillow princess she would be bro it would it would go through her mouth uh, is all I'm saying. Okay, all right. We're talking about a shish kebab over here. But we saw the canary last time. And that canary looked like... It looked like that canary like eats butter. Is what I'm saying. That canary that we saw last time looks like... Looks like... It looks like a pushover canary. It looks like one of those canary that has been like taken away from his home because exiled because he was too much of a bitch that's what he looked like only the bad guys can be buff my bad i'm sorry i apologize start to design your ideal play style but this is only the beginning in part two we'll talk about item progression 
Here's another thing with uh, that I've noticed is um, if we're going to be flowing with uh, action combat and you're going to play as a rogue, what you want to have is if you're going to be doing ranged combat and you're going to do melee combat, let the let there be an ability to let you flow with your abilities and like kind of like how Kratos does it where your bow immediately comes out and it's already stretched out where he can do all these axe attacks, axe attacks, axe attacks, and then he does one more axe attack and it brings up the enemy up from the air and then Kratos instantaneously brings out his arrow and just starts blah, 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 like that. It's a combo that I do uh, like uh, a lot in God of War. But let it be like that to where instead of what this is because we're already in action combat territory we might as well just you can start to design your ideal Watch. play style but this is only the arrow beginning. in part two now, now they got to do a whole animation to take out their weapon and it doesn't really flow that much you know what i mean like the rogue is supposed to be like bam bam damage bam talk about item progression I can make a better execution than that. your character rook can equip up to nine items each class has their own main hand offhand and alternate weapon for example my rogue has a sword a rapier and a bow for ranged attacks you also have a helmet armor a belt an amulet and two rings i will specify this so much i think just having that one piece of armor that one piece of armor is so fucking lazy it's not even funny you mean to tell me you've been working for 10 years and you said one piece of armor and that's it there's no level of rpg mechanics that you can do it's just one piece of armor and a helmet and the rings and stuff like that there's no gauntlets there's no cloak there's no level of like oh man if i wear this this will add to my damage and if i wear the boots it'll click with my other abilities there's no there's no wearing a set uh set gears you get set gears in wukong by the way you get set gears in wukong just letting you know game of the year um but there's no level of like like rpg-ness this is an action rpg just wear whatever has the best stats and then keep going we can't give any more of those Antivan boots to a Zevran as a gift. <laughs> you can acquire items in two ways. The first is by visiting vendors and faction stores. The higher you raise your reputation with each the faction, the more items become good. available for purchase. The second way to acquire items is simply by finding them in the world. For example, while exploring the- This area looks nice. No, whoever worked on this area looks nice. Like a like a, like a necropolis sort of uh, necromancer home. This looks nice. Necropolis halls, I discover a new main hand weapon, the enchanted long blade. Every item has stats and properties, as well as a rarity, ranging from uncommon to rare, to epic to legendary. This uncommon item has high physical damage and stagger stats along with a property that deals I take it those locked areas are only out because you need to go to the enchanter and unlock those abilities so since she's doing a duelist necrotic build she needs to go to the, to the enchanter to unlock those it's probably going to cost a lot of resources but it might be worth it I think that's kind of kind of good that's kind of cool uh, and, and I do like the fact that they show you what the what what you're gonna get when you enchant it. Not like, oh man, what happens when you enchant this? What happens? What 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 do you get? No, they literally show you what you're gonna get if you unlock it. I don't like it when it's like closed off and then you unlock it and it says like, 
it gives you plus two defense. And I'm like, nigga, I don't want plus two defense. I should have never used my, my shit. Plus 20% final attack damage, making the final she blow in attack chains more powerful. Perfect for my melee focused assassin build. What? What is this? What? What is this design of this disciple in Icor? What is this design? No. No, I'm not going to let you. Like, no. Low in attack chains more powerful. Perfect for my melee. This mother. Focus. This motherfucker looks like it looks like somebody quit their job halfway and they were just like, ah, oh, just leave it. He doesn't need pants. And so it's just this big gray naked like fucking ogre. I think it's a um it's definitely a uh a uh a sorry, word I'm looking for. It looks like a dark spawn. Um, let me look at the armor. Is it a former Grey Warden? No, it's not. That looks... That looks horrible. Good, you could have given him a whole piece of armor. Some boots, so, some uh, a kilt, or something. You could have gave this guy some love. You know how much people love pauldrons? You know what pauldrons are? It's those little things that you get on your shoulders when you wear armor. If you gave this guy big ass spiky pauldrons with a skull on them, people would rub their cocks. But you won't do it. So you gave them a naked dude, a naked dark spawn that just picked up some armor. And, and he's just like, man, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So he's fighting this elvish lady who's right at, at his dick. So that thing is just swatting there right between her legs. And you, what, what, what happened to, to hashtag me too? What is this? How are you going to do this to this elven lady? She don't deserve this. Put some clothes on that damn guy. He could look cool. Keep the arms though. Like have the arms bust out. At least give him some linen around his like waist or something. Make him look decked out. He could you could still make him look sick and decrepit, but put some clothes on him. It looks half done. For my melee focused assassin build. But what if I want to make it even better? At the heart of item progression is the Caretaker's Workshop. The Caretaker is a mysterious entity that has set up shop in your home base, the Lighthouse. I go where I am needed, Dweller. Now, I am here. Here you can upgrade items. We're just gonna let this random person be in our, in our base of operations, okay. Um, I've been watching Space Marine 2 and the difference between the attention to detail uh, with Dragon Age 4 is straight up depressing. Yeah, I've been looking at Dra uh, Space Marines 2 and I'm like, please don't buy it early. Please don't buy it early. I am going to wait until the 9th and then we'll play it. Is that okay? Is that cool? We're going to play it. And if anybody wants to play with me, I'm going to be on Steam. We'll play some Space Marines 2. We'll see how that goes. Every time I see an enemy menu or system, it feels like the developers have never played a uh, uh, CRPG and only n there is no CRPG anymore, hun. I, I, I know, I know they, they threw out the CRPG and put action RPG. It's, 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 I know. And only no mobile games. The game looks unfinished and I'm shocked. EA is letting it shift. I am really shocked that EA, EA is letting this happen, by the way. It will kill the brand. But at this point, I'm going to let you guys know something about this game. This game is going to be an okay out of 10. IGN is getting the spotlight right now, but guess what they're going to do? They're going to give this game a 7 out of 10 because that's what IGN does. They love 7 out of 10s. It, it, they, that, that's the only number that they know. It's going to be a straight up okay game. If I fucking see that Dragon Age is going to be a part of the Game of the Year nominees, I'm going to lose my fucking shit. That's the thing that's really going to bother me. If Dragon Age... Oh, you know what? 
the game clearly obviously the game isn't out yet clearly the game isn't out yet but there is a level of controversy out right now for the game to be like eh, eh. but I'm, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt the game is not out yet true but once the game comes out i'm gonna i'm gonna judge for myself and be like yeah i don't see this being a game of the year contender or maybe it will be i don't even know if it's going to be an okay game it's not going to be a concord but it's going to be bad yeah it's not concord it's definitely an okay one thumbs up good game it's it's gonna be a game where it's just like you know what i'm gonna borrow your time for 30 to 40 seconds and you go ahead and play space marines too that's 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 what i feel from this i would rather play core keeper than this stats and enchant your items no i'm gonna be honest i would rather play dragon age but i i wish it was the dragon age that that i would love the workshop has its own rank zero to ten you can increase this rank by finding caretaker mementos out in the world or buying them at shops why would somebody rank, have mementos wait what finding caretaker mementos out in the world Caretaker Mementos, a symbol of the last nation that dared disarm Antiva. Tap the empty crystal when you're first contact. Your blade needs no venom. Save that which you give it. Why would it, why would somebody randomly have a memento? What is a memento? Why would somebody have this? Like, if you... If you gave resources to the caretaker, yes, but why would somebody have a memento? I, I honestly don't know. I'm looking at the memento and it's literally that golden, that, that, that greenish light that you're seeing right there. That's what I'm seeing. Why would somebody have that? And there's like, bro, I found this glowy shit. You want it? You want this glowy shit? Uh, nah, man. I don't want no glowy shit. If anything, it's, it's kind of poisonous. And, uh, yeah, it kind of might explode. Who knows? Nah, nigga. I know you want these mementos. So I'm going to up the price. 2,000 coins. Fuck you, I'll take it, bitch. You didn't even know what the hell it was. You just picked it up. <laughs> you didn't even know what the hell it was. <laughs> We're buying them at shops. The higher the rank, the better your upgrades. When you upgrade an item, you'll spend the required resources and that item will get a stat increase. At the same time, its level will increase by one until it matches your current caretaker's workshop rank. It sounds like honing A higher from... rank unlocks new enchantments. These can be applied to an item or ability, imbuing it with a unique property. Oh, you can For put example, them on abilities? I can enchant my main hand weapon with plus 25% more stagger right. to quickly set up enemy takedowns. I'll also add an enchantment to one of my abilities, Toxic Dash, to increase its crit damage by 25%. That's cool. I'm not gonna lie, that's kinda cool. Your companion's items can be upgraded and enchanted as well. More on that in part three. But the workshop rank affects more than just the items you bring to the shop. Anytime you find or buy a new item in the world, it's level- Who's this, who's this guy with the Giga Chad chin and shit? <laughs> He's got better hair than me. We'll match the current rank. So we got a uh, 15% necrotic resistance and necrotic damage. There is a lot of love for necrotic damage in this game. The only th three things that I've seen is fire, ice, necrotic, and what else? Fire, ice, necrotic, and those are the three things that I know of. There's, there, there's only uh, uh, lightning. No, I haven't seen lightning damage. I've only seen necrotic. So if your or current fire. rank is one, Physical damage new items nothing. you find will be at level I'm looking one. looking at all the elements. But if your current rank is five, new items will be at level five. And if you find- Wait a minute. What? Hold up. W say that again? Rank is one. No, no, go all the way back. Items you bring to the shop. Anytime you find or buy a new item in the world, its level will match the current rank. So if your current rank is one, new items you find will be at level one.
Why? Why? So we're literally being strangled to have weapons that are in armor that are on the same level as us because we didn't get the good shit. We didn't get the good shit. So, so every time when you walk around into the world, you have to open, you're going to open up loot and be like, ah, oh, shit. Well, it's going to be, it's going to be plus one. That'd be cool if it was a plus two or plus three out of nowhere. That'd be cool. So I can get a little OP somewhere here and there. That'd be cool. But this game literally sets it to where you will never get the cool, good shit with the good stats unless you upgrade the shops and the vendors. No, 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 no. We're going to listen to it one more time because maybe Big Daddy Mr. Hardcore Mode didn't listen. We're going all the way back. Enchanted as well. More on that in part three. But the workshop rank affects more than just the items you bring to the shop. Anytime you find or buy a new item in the world, its level will match the current rank. So if your current rank is one, new items you find will be at level one. But if your current rank is five, new items will be at level five. And if you find or purchase a duplicate of an item you already own, two things happen. Prepare yourselves. First, the level of your existing item will jump up to match the caretaker's workshop rank. So, <laughs> so you can use money to upgrade a weapon from one to three. So in order to counter that dumb idea that they had the whole plus one, but now you're at, you're at plus three, you go to this guy, you spend your hard earned money. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this. This is a fucking trap. Don't do this. Don't, don't do it because this is what you're going to do. Let's say, let's say the highest rank you can go for getting like great loot is plus five only focus on plus four and plus five do not waste your fucking hard-earned gold on upgrading this thing from plus one to plus three why the hell would i want to do that i mean i know i'm the only one doing damage in the team but i'm not wasting my money on that are you kidding me and why does this creepy ass ghost that looks like doom or or dr doom or want my gold increasing its stats. The item will also be empowered, unlocking a property and increasing its rarity. Yeah. Buying a duplicate of my offhand weapon, the Duelist Blade, bumps up the blade stats, unlocks a property that applies necrosis to enemies I hit with repost, and changes its rarity from uncommon to rare. So it's a good idea to keep leveling up your caretaker's workshop because the higher its rank, the better your items will be. Whether you're upgrading them at the workshop or finding them out in the world. This is destiny. Another item type you can find or buy are runes. Each rune provides a passive bonus to your build as well as an act. Now here's the thing, folks. Can you put runes on your weapon? Can you put runes on your armor? In previous games, you can put runes on your armor and on your weapons. This one looks like you can put runes on that little dagger thing that's part of the main story. Let's see if it's just the dagger thing that's part of the main story, which is kind of cool, but at the same time, uh, uh, it's okay, it's fine. Uh, extra power is cool, but will they add it to the armor and, and weapons? Let's see active bonus you can trigger because that's what the previous Up to three runes did. can be slotted into rook's lyrium dagger i'll slot in this scorch rune which allows my otherwise necrotic focus build to deal out fire damage but skills items and upgrades aren't the only elements of creating your build because in the veil guard you're not fighting alone in part three we'll talk about companion progression No, 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 no. Because of are, you, skills, are you serious? Necrotic focus build to deal out fire damage. But skills, items, and upgrades aren't the only elements of creating your build.
So the enchantments, which if we can even call that, are are just enchantments, which okay. But you don't put runes on your weapons and armor like you did in previous games. So you get enchantments if we can even so you can't put runes on your armor and your weapons. Okay, that's that's cool. That's cool. Alright, yeah, take that away too. You are literally fighting alone. They do no damage. That's true. Yeah, so the runes are no longer like, you know, increase your ice or something like that. Uh, or or something. Yeah, th those things, they, they put that in a different circle. The runes are used for something completely different. Uh, that's a blood mage right there. Because in the Veil Guard, you're not fighting alone. In part three, we'll talk about companion progression. All right. Companion progression. Here we go. Each companion has their own skill tree and unique items. They can be equipped with a main hand weapon, an offhand weapon or keepsake, armor, and a trinket. Some gear, such as this Corvid cloak on Lucanus, can enhance my character's build. In this case, applying bleeding or necrotic damage whenever I detonate an overwhelmed target. And at the caretaker's workshop, I can upgrade and enchant companion items just like Rook's gear. Let's upgrade Lucanus's Corvid cloak to level five, greatly increasing its bonus ability. So its bonus ability damage. There, so your ability damage, but not his damage in particular. Damage. What about his? What about and enchant his? Enchant it with plus one maximum stack of necrosis. Companions also have their own skill trees, so as they level up, you can spend points to unlock skills that complement your own. This is sad. This is fucking sad. Spend points to unlock your companions. They need to kind of say what, how you get, because if I remember correctly, you get your companion, uh, you get XP for your companions via some other means, which means like relationships and shit like that. I think some of these are locked up because of, uh, because you know, story wise. I wonder what that marker means. Is that a pin or something? Oh. Some abilities can serve as primers, applying status effects to enemies such as Sundered, Overwhelmed, or Weakened. Other abilities are detonators, combining with primers to create powerful detonations on status-afflicted targets. You can swap out companion abilities anytime you're not in combat, just like Rook. In some cases, you'll want to spec companion- Um, just like Rook, can they also get, uh, rings and, uh, necklaces? and you know stuff like that um can they get a skill tree like rook no my bad all right my bad my fault all right companions with abilities that can fill in for weak spots in your build for example if i know i'm going to face a horde of dark spawn which are resistant to my rook's necrotic damage but weak against fire I'll yeah see they're wis <laughs> yeah there is <laughs> their resistance to your necrotic damage. So I'm watching people use necrotic damage and I'm like, why would you do that? And then you look at the skill tree for like, for the, like the rogue. And then you're like, motherfucker, all I got is necrotic damage. So I'm looking at the rogue. So if you go to duelist, you have to do necrotic damage. There is nothing you can do. <laughs> resistance maybe your necrotic damage will do damage to other people, but for the biggest threat, the dark spawn. Why did you bring the rogue? Just why did you bring the rogue? Now it looks like Darwin has most of the fire abilities. It looks like, I think. I want to bring along a companion like Davrin. Yeah, yeah, fire. Has powerful fire abilities. I want to bring along a companion like Davrin. I also want to bring up another thing. If you're going to be a tank, if you're going to be a tank, I think the clothing that you're wearing is really cool, but you are a tank, my brother. My brother from another mother with knife ears. Your bloody chest is fucking available. You are a tank. What are you doing rolling around in, in linen? In linen, my dude. 
in linen. You're a tank. If you're a rogue, just let me know. Just let me know if you're a rogue. I'll change your class. No, no, I can't change your class. I, I really can't. This is in Baldur's Gate 3. But I'm looking at your armor, and I'm just like, it looks nice, but you're, uh, you're a tank, though. You're a tank. Why did you bring a shield? That's the dumbest thing you could have done. He's going to da dazzle the enemies with his pecs? Well, fuck, man. I, I mean, he won me over. Who has powerful fire abilities. I'll also bring Nev, who can detonate targets that I've primed. First, I'll use Davern's Asan Strike ability to inflict fire damage and knock down his dark spawn. Next, I'll rush in with Toxic Dash to prime a target with the Sundered status. And finally, I'll use Nev's Icebreaker ability on the Sundered enemy to detonate it. In other situations, such as this battle against the undead, I want to max out my necrotic damage potential. Why? I can accomplish that by bringing along Lucanus, a fellow rogue whose gear and abilities increase the amount of necrotic damage I can deal out. <laughs> to, uh, to a skeleton? What, what, what? Is, is Eldritch skeleton necromancers who can use magic? Um weak to necrotic no no i'm looking at the i'm I, i'm looking at the thing no he's not me over here i think he would be immune to necrotic damage considering he's got bones he's he, he he's a bony boy i want to bring up something else um has anybody remembered the whole thing with combat tactics where you can have somebody else do a different ability depending on the situation where you can set up combat tactics to where somebody will pop up a potion and drink it. And like if they're at low health automatically, or one of your companions will automatically do a fireball. If an enemy is, is the, the farthest away enemy, that sort of thing. What if they added combat tactics that was in this game? And here's the thing. I'm trying to think in my head. I'm trying to, I'm closing my eyes because I'm thinking, what if they added, um, combat tactics to where you can pr add procs without you thinking. So you, you, you start a thing, um, Davern starts a thing and then ability, ability, ability happens without, without you bringing out the HUD. You don't need to bring out that giant fucking ugly ass circle that comes out this this thing right here hold on hold on you don't need to bring this thing out at all it is an insult to your eyes but if they added um a thing to where it's like as soon as davern gets this he does this and then neve does this and and this procs this or if your character does this davern does the next thing and then neve will follow up with the next thing you see what i'm saying that way you don't even need to look at your abilities at all you don't need to bring out this stupid thing everything will be according to your grand design They didn't do that shit. I, they didn't do that shit. Are you kidding me? You, you, I thought of that. That That's my idea. You think they thought of that shit? No, that's my idea. Okay? That's that's my idea. All right? They, they don't got that shit. Uh, well, why would they drink potions if they don't have HP? Actually, it's for... We're bringing potions oh, uh, for, for, for the main character, not for us. They're not even true necromancers in the lore. They just stuff wisps into corpses. Everything they claim to be innovative could have been tailor-made into the uh, party dynamics section back in Origins. It feels like a step backwards rather than a, a fresh take. It just ta uh, it's just Dragon Age 2 electric boogaloo. That's... I like that. I like that term. I like that too. Can I use that? To detonate it. So, so this is what you're going to go through. To prime a target with the sun spawn. Sun strike ability. So this is what you're going to go through. 
I don't know how you're going to do it, but you're either going to do two things, but most likely people are going to do this. They're going to stand back, look at the enemy, proc that guy up to inflict fire damage and knock down bring out that slow down you know stop time and then you get you back in the combat Start you're gonna do the ability next well stop. now you're gonna bring up the the screen again and then you're gonna hit the ability again Aggression with toxic dash to prime the ability sundered status and finally and then you got to bring up the ability the the hud you see where i'm going with this you got to bring it up again so the level immersion is just fucking gone so you're just like doing this the action combat was there and now it's gone you know what i mean and so it's just this back and forth of using combos and shit i'll use nev's icebreaker ability on the sundered enemy to detonate it In other situations, such as this battle against the undead, I want to max out my necrotic damage potential. I can accomplish that by bringing along Lucanus, a fellow rogue whose gear and Who abilities increase skeleton? the amount of necrotic damage I can deal out. <laughs> Our progression systems allow you to finely tune your skills, gear, and companions to create the perfect build. Got us in the distance. See what I mean about the ultimate down below? Look at the ultimate down below. That big ass diamond down below. Like, like you know how Overwatch has your ultimate right down below, but it only pops up. Like that, that, that ability that's right in the bottom middle of your screen in Overwatch, that thing only comes out when you're ready. So, so having it out the, the whole time is just an eyesore. So you got this giant ass glowing diamond. It was small for a second. Now it's a giant ass fucking rainbow diamond down there. So, so it's like, okay, I don't know. It, it, I'm, I'm going with a minimalistic approach to it. Cause I'm looking at the giant diamond and I'm like, why the fuck is this thing is fucking huge back down here. I'm looking at the, the, the area down there and I'm like, how can we look at less, but still have a good action RPG? And they said, fuck that shit. That was a cool, uh, Reaper moment right there. That was kind of cool. All right. That was, that was it. That was it. Uh, I, I, I'm just going to wait for, uh, so I'm, there's, there's a lot of good developers out there, man, that are making quality CRPGs ever since Baldur's Gate three, I've been seeing a lot of CRPGs pop up saying, Hey, we're trying to do something of our own. And I think that's fucking great that there's a lot of games, be them CRPGs or like dungeons, dungeons and dragons type of style of stuff where, where it's just like you, we all like that in dragon age origins. And the fact that you can't really do too much of a build, you can make more of a build in KOTOR in KOTOR 2 than you can make in this game. I, 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 I shit you not, you can make more of a build in that game than you can build in this game. I, cause, cause I'm looking at the rogue and I'm just like, well, the rogue has a duelist, but they also have other things as well. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, then what else do they have besides, because they focused on necrotic damage a lot and a lot of abilities were necrotic damage. A lot of it. A lot of it was necrotic damage. All the, uh, the philosophy of this game is simplify things. Ain't no way they give us tactics like, yeah, you're right. The, it's simplified for a, for a modern audience. Yeah. Yep. That sucks. That sucks. But hey, if uh, I, I, guys, I'm just giving you my honest uh, honest thoughts on Dragon Age because I love Dragon Age, and I firmly believe that, and this is my own opinion. I firmly believe that this Dragon Age is a... Yeah, son, I'm, I'm proud of your macaroni... Uh, um, your macaroni art out of 10. 
that that's what i'm looking at this i'm looking at it i'm just like yeah son thank you for your macaroni drawing i'll hang it up at my job that that's what i'm looking at on the on this i i feel no sense of like damn we're back homie bioware has done it again it took a while but we got here i'm gonna be honest through and through and not only that i'm gonna diss dragon age or any other company the way i want to diss them because i'm gonna do that i'm not the type of person to be up on fucking youtube and be like ah man ah man well i'm gonna be right in the middle and i'm like that's cool but call shit out for what they are all right I'm not going to do this whole song and dance thing where it's just like, <laughs> I do not want to be somebody who's just, who just doesn't see it. You know, I, 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 I've, I've already been there with Bethesda. I've been there with cyberpunk. I've been there with, with, <laughs> I've been there with Bethesda again. Um, I've been there with so many games that I, and game developers that I thought I really appreciated back in the day. I was an Ubisoft pleb. I was an Ubisoft shill back in the day, homie, back when Assassin's Creed unity came out, I was like, yeah, all these bugs are bad, but Unity's still good, bro. I used to be that guy. And then I fucking grew up and then I realized that, uh, it, it ain't the same homie. It, it ain't the same. I'm not going to die myself down to be like, oh man, well, if I'm, you know, kind of skeptic and right in the middle, maybe I'll get some special privileges. Fuck that shit. I like it when I'm critical about a video game that I love and then developers come to me and be like, you know what, homie, you're kind of right. Why don't you come on over and tell us how you really feel and check out the game? And I'm like, wait, I can say whatever the fuck I want and you guys will let me test the game. Well, I, sh I thought I was the only one with a big dick in this room. And apparently there's two people with a big dick in this room. I like that shit. I don't like fucking Bethesda who just go to the people that are positive And then they're like, yeah, why don't you come on over and uh, we'll give you some free shit. And then they're just like, ha ha, I love Starfield. <laughs> no, no, Starfield was shit. And this game is like, okay. Toxic, toxic positivity. Yeah, toxic. I am, yeah, here's the thing. This is me, chat. Gamer is me. This is me. This is, gamer is at top. YouTuber is right down here. Okay me paying my bills <laughs> is all the way up here <laughs> is all the way up. <laughs> paying my bills gamer youtuber i don't take this whole thing seriously <laughs> i i will always prioritize gamer i will always prioritize my gamer mode I am not somebody that's going around like, well, if you could understand the developers and I'm like, nigga, I got no time to understand the developers. I got to make sure that, that, uh, my sister's kids are being fed. I got to make sure my grandma's doing all right. I got to make sure that my brother is doing okay. Being a single father. I got all this other shit. I got to worry about. You want me to worry about some developers having a hard time making a video game? Nigga, are you serious right now? I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want and fuck the rest. I genuinely can't fathom how anyone could be positive about this. There's no silver lining. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. There's a, there's a certain level of like, of like blissful ignorance to it. Cause I see other people actually enjoying this game. And them having a great time with the game is fucking amazing. Yes. Are they ignorant about the other stuff? That's fine. Are they having a good time? They are having a good time. Then two thumbs up because we don't have long on this world, man. We don't have long time on this world. And if it makes them forget the shit they got to go through in, in, in life, the bills they got to pay, the fucking political like propaganda shit that's going on, then let them have it. Part of me is just like, man, I wish I was like them. Man, I is I where I just like, oh, Dragon Age. 
I wish I was that. But my brain is like, and I'm just like, shit, I gotta be smart now. Fuck, man. Fuck, man. Why can't I be like that guy? And I'm pointing at this one guy that's just like, <laughs> enchantments. And I'm like, I wanna be like that guy. <laughs> Take me back. Take me back. <laughs> We pay them for the product. We don't need to care about them. Exactly. Exactly. As soon as we give them their money, they're like, all right, fuck off. Listen, has anybody ever, has anybody ever had that one moment where they regret being with somebody for like, like that one night stand. And then they just, they're just like, all right, so why are you still in my house? That's game development. That's game development. They're just like, Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying our game. Uh, I'm enjoying your game, but I'm having a few issues with the guy. Uh, uh, shut up. You already bought my game. Shut up. You already bought my game. Shut up. Shh. We don't want any toxic positivity up in here. You, you already bought our game. It, you already bought our game. Shut up. Shut up. Well, I'm going to return the game. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, you've already passed the two hour mark. You already passed the two hour mark. You can't get your money back. Uh, you can't get your money. <laughs> I wish that two hour mark was four hour marks. If they changed the, the mark for returning a game to two hours to, to like three or four hours, every de game developer is like, shit, we got to make a good game. God fucking damn.